Well, welcome to Uncharted Faith, a podcast from Trinity Church where we explore the deep and challenging questions of faith to discover God's truth. These discussions often expose areas of cultural or traditional belief in our lives that may need to be remodeled, realigned, or reaffirmed to reflect a life abiding in Jesus Christ. Our guests for this discussion are Jesse Shanks and Christy Jones. Jesse is a licensed practicing mental health therapist, and Christy is the leader of the Freedom Ministry at Trinity Church. Christy and Jesse joined Pastor Paul Backhouse for a three part discussion on mental, physical, spiritual freedom in the kingdom of God. We invite you to like and subscribe to this podcast so you can be notified of when part three is released. If you would like to comment or contact us, please visit trinitychurchmorton.org or respond in this episode's comments section. Thank you for joining us as we explore the depths of freedom in the kingdom. So we're back and... um so one of my favorite passages is Matthew 17, and to engage, um, it's ascending the mountain of mountain transfiguration is the passage. Mm-hmm. And Jesus, you know, he, he goes up, he begins to, tran- he transfigures, and again, the Christic covenant says that the kingdom is within, and as he began to emanate, it came from within. Mm-hmm. Now the cloud did come down, you read it. And then taking that passage, and then sitting with Jesus, and just using my sanctified imagination of my eyes, my ears, even my, my sense of smell, and just, I don't know if you ever felt a fog come in. Mm-hmm. Just, and just mm-hmm. kind of, okay, Jesus is there. Whew. Even now I can feel it, right? I just can feel the, the presence in that, in that cloud. And then just say, now, now the question becomes is, is for all of us in our disciplines is, are we willing to allow the examination mm. of the Spirit of God sure. because as I've been speaking in the last few weeks about shame, the first thing you want to do is this. Yep. And so that's where I bring mm. the component of the spiritual formation into this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm curious um, that in the mental health, uh, in, in your therapy uh, practice, do you use visualizations like that or? Oh, sure. Then, okay, all right. So you just hit on something that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Which is what I believe is distinctly different than any other discipline is what I find in therapy, What it ha- the biggest thing that it has to offer people, mm-hmm. and that is safety. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, just complete utter this is it this is this is unless you share anything outside of here it's so safe and it's just beautiful and the you know what people don't understand about therapy is it's a process and what is that process it is what you know like what is being created here Mm -hmm. and i can tell you i've had christians say, you know, I wouldn't be telling you this if you weren't my therapist, if I wasn't here. Hmm. And I've had so many people share so much, you know, shame, you know, all the feelings that they've never shared with anyone. Mm -hmm. And it is literally, you know, you're talking people, I mean, like in their 70s, holding on to these things. And that is what I see as something that I have not been able to find anywhere else that is a beauty that therapy has to offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's that safety. And to answer that question, I do, but I'm very visual. Okay. And, um, you know, people will be sharing their feelings and I'll, and I'll get a picture because that's just kind of how God speaks Mm -hmm. to me. And when I start to describe that picture, you know, especially for the, you know, I don't even know how many of my Christians understand the prophetic gift that I have. But they're like, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> and it's, it's just a yeah. picture that the Lord Amen. gave me. Yeah. So. so one of the things I want to say, though, about freedom ministry is that I really do appreciate is that um, the, safe, the safety that, of the culture. Um, mm-hmm. You know, one of the things that I, I, I really celebrate is the fact that I feel safe as a lead pastor mm-hmm. to go to the team to say, hey, I need some ministry knowing that there's not going to be judgment. There's not mm-hmm. going to be um, any kind of um, 
letting people know what's yep. going no, on. There will be no uh, chatter. Exactly. And in <laughs> fact, you even we even signed statements to that. Mm -hmm. But that's and that's what I again I see mm -hmm. the the incredible um, convergence yeah. of the the culture that we're creating here. So um, now, Freedom Ministry uses the sanctified imagination as well yeah. in great ways. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just curious, uh, how do you get someone who maybe is just coming in for the first time mm -hmm. to activate that? Um, it <laughs> kind of <laughs> depends. Um, That's a layered response. I know. Coming. Like, it depends on how ready and willing someone mm. is. Um, usually we just offer it right up front, right? Okay, let's. Uh, we're not usually trying to go anywhere that's abnormal. Mm -hmm. Usually we're going back to a memory if they've already presented or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Um, so hopefully there's some concrete, there's a somewhere there's sure. a concrete substance for them to hold to mm -hmm. to help with that process. Uh, and we're asking them to imagine, you know, be in the memory or, or you know, imagine yourself there again. How do you feel? And then we're asking Jesus to come into that space. Some people, it's very quick and easy. Um, other people, it's very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, even for myself, sometimes I'm like, ask Jesus, like, "Hello, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make this a little easier for me?" <laughs> um, but usually, it just will adjust. You know, ask a different question. Um, try to avoid. Sometimes we'll go away from the visual and just ask a standard question, yeah. right? That they don't need to see anything for. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. wh what, do you, what are you sensing as a response yeah. to the uh -huh. question from Jesus of how he was feeling at that time? Mm -hmm. Or um, what, did, what did he think about what yeah. was going on? Um, that doesn't require that they can see yeah. or perceive anything special. Uh, and so we usually just kind of adjust away mm -hmm. from too much visual if that's a sure. big challenge for yeah. the person. So. so one of the things I, I, I want to also get into is you both are in the ministry of helping people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what do you find to be some of the most um, uh, common issues that you both deal with um, mm -hmm. and, and when people come to you um, I know that we live in a culture that can be very antithetical to living free it mm -hmm. just it just happens that way um, from a Christian perspective. So I'm just curious, what are some of the more common things that you may uh, find that people are struggling with, mm -hmm. especially in, in, in 2024? And maybe I'm, I'm being too, let me say it this way. Maybe I'm also thinking it's worse now than it used to be. Oh. Maybe it isn't. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just mm. human nature is always the same. But <laughs> I personally don't think it's any worse. Okay, I, right. I think we're starting, we're more willing to discuss it, Okay. I think, in this in our current culture yeah. than we have in the past. Okay. And I think the media the way it is and the, how connected we are has made us much more aware okay. of mm -hmm. problems, right? Sure. Um, yeah. I even think, you know, like when you get a cult scenario and uh -huh. something horrible happens, you might hear about that. Uh-huh one time in your lifetime mm -hmm. years back mm. but nowadays we know that there's something crazy going on over here and we know something yeah. over there that's kind of sure. wild and that doesn't really make much so i feel like it's a kind of our awareness and our our knowledge of what's going on is a higher mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. than it was in the past and so that makes it feel mm -hmm. more overwhelming okay. All right. um but that wasn't the original question that you asked well that's fine i'm just what i'm exploring here is um Basically, just knowing that we live in an age that it's, and I think you're making a good point, because of internet and social media, everything becomes incredibly upfront in your face mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. um, 100 years ago, we never would have known that the hurricane happened. Mm -hmm. We never would have known it. Right. right. Um, so, <clears throat> maybe more 150 years ago. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> but um, but I mean, you're hitting more on what are the commonalities right. across the board. Sure. And I, at least for us, the things that come out, whether people are expecting to deal with them or they're in their 70s and going, oh mm -hmm. my, <laughs> mm -hmm. that happened and I've never told anybody. Mm -hmm. um, 
is the sexual side of things having Mm -hmm. sexual you know hurt whether young or older Mm -hmm. um is a a big one for sure Mm -hmm. um and then in the church i feel like we really deal a lot with manipulation yes and areas Mm -hmm. of control Mm -hmm. um whether they experienced it first Mm -hmm. or they're just the one doing it Mm -hmm. and then um anger and hatred Okay. Especially towards self. All right. That, those are yeah. probably the biggest Do you think that ones. it has a theological root to that as well? To the anger or to, to the, the control? To the ha- self, self-hatred and... Yeah. Uh, and the reason, so, probably. So where I'm coming at this is <laughs> that when you... Okay, so I'm, a, I'm about to probably get people to go, what did pastor just say? <laughs> so there is a sermon preached in history... Um, that sparked the great awakening. Mm -hmm. But there's a famous line that says, God hates you. He's got you like a spider Mm -hmm. over the raging fires. And it's by his grace, right, that you're not burning. Okay. And I'm like, what image of God are we preaching here? Yep. Wow. And so... I'm just wondering if even our theological construct mm-hmm. of what we have and we've promoted about God has actually impacted an unnecessary f- phobia of mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Almost, uh, and maybe that's the wrong sure. word, but it's more of a fear, a terror of God. Terror. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the better word, a terror of God that actually creates a distance. And even if someone's sitting in church, they're like, I don't, I don't want to meet that God. I'm just mm-hmm. just throwing it out there, and you can respond however yeah. you want to in this. Yeah, uh-huh. really good thoughts. I had to really think about you know differences that maybe I saw. I mean, I know not everybody got a break during COVID, but I certainly didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, as my patients would be like, "Oh yeah, you know," because you know they're just collecting stimulus and just mm-hmm. chilling, and you know they want to meet with me more, and I'm like, "You've got to be joking." I am. I you have d- no more hours. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't get a break here. Um, what I would say that maybe I've seen since COVID, um, I do think that there has been an intensity. And I can say okay. that even in the mm-hmm. secular arena, there's been an intensity. But what I see, because COVID was so stressful, I mean, I had patients that were in the medical field on the mm-hmm. front lines and to hear them just process what they were going through, you know, it was, it, it, it did a lot to their, Mm -hmm. you know, sympathetic nervous system, you know? Um, And so I think that, I think it pulled, like, I don't even want to say it grew more capacity. I think it, it caused to have more capacity for more stress. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Hmm. what I see you know, you know, things that I see, anxiety, depression, trauma, um, something that I think is unique in my practice that people keep finding me. And it's not because I, you know, I have one place that I advertise and I don't necessarily say this in my advertisement. I do say that, you know, one of my expertise is in emotional neglect Mm -hmm. and that's about it. But what I keep finding are coming to me are adult children of emotionally, immature parents Mm -hmm. and I just take them on a healing journey and there's been some things that have organically happened that you know I have these puzzle pieces to help them that has been a theme (laughs) in my practice which is like again I'm not really advertising it and but I'm like okay God is doing this like he's sending them my way because he's really given me a little bit of a framework to help them Mm -hmm. so I would say that that's kind of what I see and I, I do think that there's been a difference, yet people have, you know, in general, people are coming saying, you know, there's something about my life that mm-hmm. I don't like. I want it to be different. Right. And that's why they're coming yeah. to therapy because they can't figure it out. They've tried, you know, whatever, so many different things. And they're, I would say, kind of like, you know, an addendum to that is how do I manage stress better? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask here is, 
both of your ministries are rooted in compassion. Mm -hmm. They really are. So I'm reminded of the scripture where Paul says, I no longer see anyone according to the flesh. Mm. So yeah. let's just, in both of your, your contexts, what has the Lord revealed to you about just the overall, um, in general, the person that maybe you're ministering to? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, what has he um, done in your heart in regards to that individual? How do you see that individual? If you have a, a quick oh, response, okay. go ahead. I'm yeah. kind of percolating. Yeah, sure. I would say, you know, I think this goes into just the way God kind of fashioned me. Like, okay. you know, just as far as yeah. my giftings, I'm very focused on gifts. And I've heard it from my patients across the board, you know, ones who are, mm -hmm. you know, pre-believers, where I just point out, because I, I see it on them, I see this gift, and I will identify it, and I will say it's a gift, mm -hmm. and they'll say, huh, I never thought of it in that way. And I'm, I'm calling forth identity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing when I'm calling that forth and, and it gets reinforced in therapy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how that changes them. Mm -hmm. It does so much for them. Yes. And I hear that from them where they will, you know, a year later they'll say, you know, one of the biggest things out of this year of therapy, because we'll have times of re, you know, reviewing our goals in progress and they will say, when you identified this. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of that, though, is just kind of like part of my gifting. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I feel so honored. Every single person that is in my practice, I am humbled and mm -hmm. just honored mm -hmm. that, you know, they chose me, that the Lord brought them into my path. And I do. The Lord definitely gives me, yeah. you know, his heart for them and uh -huh. his love for them. Um, even when some of them can drive me a little nuts, but, uh, if any of you are listening, <laughs> it's not you that I'm talking about. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so I definitely, yeah. I definitely feel that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Christy, I'm just curious. Yeah. It's, I think, um, the identity piece mm -hmm. is so key. Um, the part that always gets me is everyone I feel like just across the board and it's going to sound bad as I say it, but <laughs> it's not bad. Everyone comes in and thinks they're really special <laughs> and thinks that they're the exception mm. to all of the good things of life. Okay. So oh, you're yeah. saying special in the opposite. In the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're just that special that God everybody, everybody else's. <laughs> yes. Everybody else's stuff is easy it's and good to highlight, yeah. just not so, you know, challenging and they didn't have this and this and all these hard things. no, have some people gone through the worst thing I could even imagine in my own mind? Absolutely. So I'm not discrediting any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we, even if we've had a fantastic, right? What well, would be like the poster child kind of upbringing and everything? We still end up believing all of these things that we're an exception to that mm. God can't really love me because of this, mm -hmm. or I have to feel shameful because of this. Mm -hmm or no one else is going to do it for me, so I've got to control and manipulate, mm -hmm. right? Just all of these areas that we find ourselves as the exception. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an area where my heart has just constantly been broken over and over mm -hmm. again for people. It's like, yeah. you're amazing, and you are special. Yeah. You actually are really, really special, but on the complete opposite direction of, of how you see yourself. Yeah. And if you can see yourself the way God sees mm -hmm. you, it shifts everything. Right. And that's it's actually so why I wanted to ask that question, because one of the things that I really appreciate about Freedom Ministries is that at the end of every session, you invite the other prayer workers to share what they have heard from the Lord on behalf of uh, the person that's receiving ministry. And it's just not a prophetic word that just it's actually something that has formed over the hour and a half prayer time yeah. in the Lord. And so and I've heard uh, quite a few testimonies where people are just like they had such an encounter with the love of the father mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then therefore they're they now feel like now they know they belong mm -hmm. now they know that they've never been alone and all of these what i believe in my own heart as focusing on the spiritual formation component of this is that 
Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He says, I have never, have, will leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. And that is from eternity, uh, past, mm -hmm. present, and future. Yeah. It just is. Mm -hmm. um, and Psalm, I mean, Psalm 139 speaks of, where can I go? Yeah. <laughs> I can't go nowhere. <laughs> I yeah. can even go into the depths of Sheol, mm -hmm. and you are there. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I'm curious. Both of you rely on the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Both of you. Mm -hmm. So I just want to hear a conversation between both of you of how the Spirit of God functions in your life while you are engaging mm -hmm. in your specific ministries. <laughs> surprise! Yeah, that was a surprise. Good question, though. Hmm. Yeah, I think what's interesting is you sometimes have to be really covert. I do. Right? Like right. You're not get, you don't get to just outwardly say, all Jesus. right, let's talk to the Lord about this. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, hello. Hey. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I think I get, I get a little bit of a pass on that. Um yeah, I mean, I don't like you with, with what you just described. We try not to be a part of mm -hmm. the interaction mm -hmm. when it's during the session time. Mm -hmm. We're really trying because we can speak in, and it, it, there has value, right, to what you're saying. And, and when you're speaking to someone, you saying sure. something to me, like, oh, that, that's amazing. I love mm -hmm. that truth, right? But there's just this completely different reality when it's the Lord right. saying it, and they can actually hear it from the Lord. Right. So we really try hard to not be the one speaking mm -hmm. in because we can right. mm. let them hear it fr straight from the Lord. Um, but then at the end we get to speak in, sure. but in that process, it's just for me, I'm we're, whether I'm leading the session or just part of the team, we like to work in teams of three. Yeah. Um, it's just learning to sense what Holy spirit right. is saying and doing and what kind of direction to go or what questions mm -hmm. to ask or, um, even the order, right? And I'm sure same thing. Sure. Like, what do we start with? Where should uh -huh. we maybe go from here? And sometimes what I see as a path at the start of a session is not where we go at all. Right. <laughs> and it's like, okay, whatever, Lord. And I just trust. Or the person might decide it, right? Mm -hmm. The person says, you're like, yeah, let's deal with that thing you just brought up. Uh -huh. And then you get to the next step and they're like, no, thank you. <laughs> <You're> like, yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> where do we go here? Right. <laughs> no, what you're talking about, Christy, is reinforcing someone, their own belief that they can hear from God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for you to pull back and facilitate that is so important and crucial and, you know, healing. Um, I would say, you know, yes, different, you know, when I'm in therapy with someone and I typically only work with individuals, mm -hmm. yeah, I have done family therapy and I have an, I have an adult right now, 20 something who, um, she's talked to her mom and her mom is going to come and join some sessions and, oh, cool. and we're going to do some work there. And there's a lot of hurt and she's one of the ones that has, you know, there's actually a book that is adult children of emotionally immature parents. I forgot to mention that. It's oh. a wonderful book and okay. there is a workbook. Okay. And so she is one that has really done a lot of work with that. Mm. And we're at that point where, you know, mom is capable at this point to do that, which I love, you know, I, you know, cause That's having amazing. mom there and being able to do this in a safe space cause they can't do it together. Mm -hmm. It's challenging. Mm -hmm. um, that is going to go miles more you know it's different like I'm there to process things but man this can really this can really change their lives Absolutely. so I'm excited about that but all I have to say usually it's just myself and one person and in the you know in psychology we talk about another relationship the other and the other you know we all experience it the other is the relationship that gets created between two and so we've, you know, there's been some really wonderful teachings and I cannot quote the authors who have really, you know, gone into this, but they're probably, probably analysts. And, you know, what are we creating here? What are we co-creating here? So there is an other that gets created and uh, rec being able to recognize that it's, it's really something. It's really something. So, so mm -hmm. I, I need you to back up a bit because... Okay. Somehow I, I met, so can you kind of 
speak to others. Expand on, yeah. Yeah, because... Expand on that one for us. (laughs) Because I'm a little lost, and so... Yeah, it's... There is this, you know... Okay, let's go back to the earlier thought I said about how therapy makes this safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're discussing things that they've never told anyone before. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's all sorts of feelings that are Mm -hmm. going on, Mm -hmm. and they are only getting shared with me. They're getting Mm -hmm. this experience with me. Now... For some of this, and am I, you know, for some, they'll get to a point where some of that information they do end up sharing with others because, you know, they have this corrective emotional experience where they feel all the shame and they don't get that from mm-hmm. me. And so then it's like, oh, I'm okay, you know? And so then, you know, many of them become open to be able to get that community element in their life and, you know, which further disarms shame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but that other is, I mean, we all have it, mm-hmm. you know, any relationship that you're in, if you, you think about it, it's like, oh, I have, this is what that relationship right. looks like. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I'm talking okay. about. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. But I was just curious cause yeah. I've never heard that verbiage yeah, before. Sure. So yeah. it's like, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to compute uh, the verbiage mm-hmm. along with yep. the concept. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, okay, here's, here's another thing that is, is different and which I find a place for all. Like I said, I wish all my people would go get deliverance because um, I believe in it. I've been through it multiple times. I'm going to continue. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, what? Come on. Where'd that thought go? Come on back. <laughs> I was going somewhere with that. Okay, got it. Thank you, Lord. Um, <laughs> something that's different is when I come to therapy, I'm bringing my whole self. Okay. Mm. So my whole self becomes this, you know, I'm creating space for the other, but I'm bringing myself for that person to encounter. Mm -hmm. And part of me, you know, I create that space internally for whatever they think and feel to come into me because what's happening is I'm, that's that empathy. Yeah. And you're trying to carry it with them. That's right. I'm, I'm trying to be in that space with Mm -hmm. them. And when I'm able to reflect what I feel back to them, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's different than, yeah. but it's got a space, right? Absolutely. What you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you're talking about, it doesn't matter whether you've been, you know, physically, sexually traumatized, or if you've been completely neglected, mm-hmm. um, or just somewhere in between where you think you're okay, but you have these like spaces where Mm -hmm. you're you're not there's there's emptiness there Mm -hmm. you know I am saying I am here with you and I am present and this matters Mm -hmm. so again and I want to bring it back to the spiritual what I'm hearing is is both of you participate in incarnational ministry Mm. that's really what's happening Mm -hmm. well (laughs) 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 you're you're basically representing in a way Christ Mm -hmm. in the moment Yeah. yeah so Yep. Now I go back to my own Roman Catholic, Roman 5, 6, I mean, I'm sorry, James 5, 16, confess your sins to one another yeah. Yeah. and you will be healed, right? And yeah. so I realized that as a good Protestant, um, I don't see the necessity of having an individual to confess sins to that is representative of, of sitting in the seat of Christ and receiving absolution from, from right. that individual. But there is value to... Um, and, and this brings in uh, uh, to sharing that with someone where there is that, that feeling, ah. Oh. All right. Well, that's the end of part two mm-hmm. of your discussion with Jesse and Christy on freedom in the kingdom. Yep. Um, which I like that title because it rhymes. Yeah. Freedom in the kingdom. Right? We, could, we could wrap that. Um, but uh, so in the first session, you, you really just intro. Right. You, you kind of got into... Um, definitions of freedom a little bit and, right. and kind of that. Um, one of the things that that um, struck me, again, watching it as an outsider, right. I, I didn't get to participate in this, probably uh, the point at which I kind of sat forward and started listening more intently was when you started talking about common struggles mm-hmm. and kind of, hey, what are the things that you see come up the most yeah. often? And it, it was... It, Really, I was comparing it to, okay, what would I expect mm-hmm. to see come up most often just based on my interactions with people right. 
through ministry, through mm-hmm. family, friends, things like that. Um, I did find it interesting, the the comparison of the two lists that they mm-hmm. gave. So Christy highlighted sexual trauma and hurt, manipulation and control, and anger and hatred. And then Jesse highlighted, mm-hmm. the first three she highlighted were anxiety, depression, trauma. Yes. So there was a little crossover mm-hmm. there. And then she went on to emotional neglect. Yes. And I thought it was very interesting that in the freedom ministry sessions, it seemed like the things that they they tackled were significant like moments of trauma. Mm-hmm. So sexual trauma, while it might happen multiple times over the course of a lifetime, there are sig- specific moments right. of trauma that you're like, man, I experienced this massive pain um, or even manipulation and control. You can point to the moments mm-hmm. it's happening. Um, this The same with with offenses that bring about hatred mm-hmm. or anger, you know, abuse and things like that. Those are things that are real moments that you're like, man, I can point to the exact yes. moment this happened. I can relate it to you. But anxiety, depression, even, even that kind of emotional neglect, there's not a moment right. you point to with that. Those are more, it's, 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 it's an ongoing experience of anxiety. Mm-hmm. There's just kind of this, this momentum almost right. mm-hmm. of pain. Mm-hmm. That that's there, and I could see where they're rooted together, yes. right? Where where moments of trauma lead to extended periods of mm-hmm. anxiety or depression and and things like that. But I just found it interesting yeah. how different. And then, as a result, you look. Freedom Ministry is a a moment. Yes, it's it's a singular session mm-hmm. where you deal with oftentimes singular moments. Mm-hmm of pain or or a singular moment when a lie becomes a reality in mm-hmm. your life, right? Because they talked about that. But where Jesse has this longer term relationship with her clients, they're dealing with these threads of pain Correct. that are woven through their lives. Mm-hmm. And and so I just I just thought it was interesting. That's a point where I was right. like noticing something right. that I wouldn't have necessarily thought about if it weren't for right. this conversation. Well I appreciate that you're identifying that because that was part of the intent was to to illustrate how the two ministries complement one another. Yeah. The the singular moment of freedom that we experience from freedom ministry. So but if that's not dealt with, then the symptoms, right. anxiety, depression, um, the self-sabotaging behaviors that oftentimes mental health will identify that just because we have that moment of freedom and forgiveness, because oftentimes Freedom Ministries goes back to that place of forgiving um, others, yourself, and even to the place of saying, I need to forgive God, even though God doesn't need forgiveness. In our own heart, we may feel like he has done us wrong, so to speak. Right. But then that has uh, an emotional and, and mental health uh, symptom in our life. So and that's what I was trying to illustrate, even just even bringing this topic up together, is that there is a walk of freedom, of salvation, living out our salvation, working it out with fear and trembling that requires the hard work. Yeah. Um, and even within our own movement, um, we, we oftentimes, I have seen that we, we reduce the experience to God, with God at, to the altar, to a singular moment, and then we say, I'm free, Yahoo, praise God. But then now we have to live it out. And the value of giving attention to emotional and mental health, I believe, um, is necessary just in our, our, our walk with the Lord. And this is actually where I brought in other in the first session uh, um, episode was there's this, and this brings us to the spiritual formation component. We're being formed in the image and likeness of Christ. Both and it's not either or, and I'm I'm excited about the 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 interaction that these two disciplines are having. Yeah, I think I think it's interesting to note that that and, and you pointed it out several mm-hmm. times throughout this discussion that there 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 was there has been, and I know I've I've even um, played into the stigma of right. mental health in in the church mm-hmm. that well you sh- sh- should all you 
you should just need Jesus and the right. Holy Spirit, and, mm-hmm. and he can heal all of that, and you don't need counseling right. or things like that, or, or uh, you know, kind of the, especially when we don't understand mm-hmm. the mental health issues of others, it can often look like, well, just get over it, right? right. Remember the old, yeah. The uh, stop it, stop it, yeah, yeah. The Bob Newhart skit, and, and and that can be even that skit can be a point of, okay, this kind of denigrates, yeah, mental health, mm-hmm. and 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 the the value mm-hmm. of a right. therapist, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, kind of c- course correcting yes. that we in the church have been doing over the last. 20, 30 years at least, yeah. Of of just saying, okay, there is value mm-hmm. to to bridging that gap between mm-hmm. spiritual uh, a- addressing trauma and and emotional issues from a spiritual perspective and a mental health perspective, and then even a physical mm-hmm. perspective. Absolutely, recognizing the value of of medication mm-hmm. to deal with certain mental health issues, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, so I really felt like that was, um, even as, as both Christy and Jesse talked about the importance of creating this culture of safety, yes, absolutely. Um, that, that we are moving more and more in a direction where people feel safe. Yes. I, and I, th- I think that's pretty obvious in our, mm-hmm. in our culture, not just the church culture, but the world's culture. Right. People feel much safer uh, sharing and sometimes oversharing their mental health <laughs> struggles. Um, but, but there is that component still where looking at the way, and you talk, we'll talk about this more in part three, but looking at the ways that we can make that culture a reality Mm -hmm. in our corporate environment or just, just in our relationships with people, Mm -hmm. not, not at the, not at the therapeutic level or at the freedom ministry level, mm-hmm. but just in our interactions yes. with one another. Yes. So, so one of the things that um, I wanted to uh, speak to is that word culture. That culture is our expectation of how we're going to interact with one another, whether it's through, let's say, religious ceremony, um, our, our speech with one another. It's an, just an expectation. And so creating an expectation where we're in a worship service together. Maybe just come into service or you come into a small group where you recognize that you're not going to remove all your your uh, filters and everything because that's going to be based upon the level of relationship you have with someone. Right. But it's creating a culture that says we value vulnerability and in this vulnerability will then lead to transparency because it's in that transparency where true freedom and growth happens. I think a great example of that, even though Jesus sovereignly um, opened it up with the conversation the woman at the well, it's like they're having this conversation about water, physical water. And then all of a sudden he throws in there, if you knew who it was asking you for water, you would ask him for water, right? So there was this invitation to um, vulnerability um, that starts with just the basic conversation. And there was something about Jesus that made it safe for her to go, wow, this is something more. And whether it's the Holy Spirit, whether it's just the way we um, illustrate relationships with others, that someone says, looking from the outside, boy, that's a powerful relationship I'm viewing between uh, sister so-and-so and and brother so-and-so. I want that kind of experience. That's what I value is creating that uh, culture of safety. And I know it's kind of a word that gets mocked. Um, But let's just say vulnerability and transparency, because that is really where people experience freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And, And there's an interesting component to this as well that I would say you know, Jesus referenced in his teaching when he said the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Yeah. Or the kingdom of God is like yeast. In both cases, it was a small amount, but it grew into something bigger. And he said the, in the case of the mustard seed, it starts out as the smallest seed, but it grows mm-hmm. into this tree that is so attractive that the birds come and rest mm-hmm. in its branches. Mm-hmm. And there's this component of as we as the body of Christ incorporate that 
that reality into who we are, it it grows into something that is attractive to people to come and rest Absolutely. in the branches in, in, in this place where they are being fed by mm-hmm. the mustard seeds that are produced by the tree. Mm-hmm. They're being uh, refreshed by the shade of the tree. There's, there is a, a health and a wholeness that comes as the kingdom of God is, uh, flourishes mm-hmm. uh, within us. And, and I think it's, it's cool because it, it starts small. Right, mm-hmm. so Jesse Jesse would talk about how she had to be a little more careful with how right. she incorporated her spiritual component into her work mm-hmm. as a counselor, but she doesn't have to worry about oh I need to drop a giant bomb right. spiritual bomb on people because it's the tiny seeds yes. that are just part of who she is absolutely and that's why she's attractive as a therapist mm-hmm. to her clients mm-hmm. and she has so many she can't keep you mm-hmm. know right. she can't take any more right now because right. she's full up mm-hmm. so if you're looking for Jesse as a therapist maybe she can recommend somebody yeah um but but that's that was one of those components yeah. that I'm like this is really interesting yeah. how Again, there's there's not this need. I think Christians a lot of times feel a need to drop spiritual bombs on people. Mm-hmm. No, I, and I think, yeah. and there is not that need. Mm-hmm. Jesus spoke about water right. to the woman, and in there was a seed. Yep, that then produced a harvest. Amen. Absolutely. And he didn't. He didn't go. He didn't start with the. Let me tell you everything you've ever yeah, done. Yeah, let me tell you everything you've ever done. <laughs> he got there through a process of growth in the relationship. Yeah. And and I have to, you know, again, applying my imagination to the story, sure. I have always imagined there was a lot more to that conversation uh, than yeah. what got recorded. Mm-hmm. There were a lot there was a lot more words that took place. Sure. There was a lot more interaction that took place that the writers just didn't give us mm-hmm. every little detail. Exactly. Yeah. Um and within that context, knowing, man, he he allowed that that seed to mm-hmm. to grow and flourish within that conversation yes. until the kingdom of God was a tree that then the entire town came and rested in its branches. It's, yes, it's an amazing thing. It so, is. Yes. So, uh, was there anything else from from part two that you would highlight in the midst of our conversation here? So I just want to identify how the Spirit of God functions within both of their ministries. I know that. Like you would say, 20, 30 years ago, there was a real suspicion to mental health within the church. And I, I really wanted to bring out the fact that both of them in their uh, disciplines, and even Christy pointed out, she goes, I can be overt about the Spirit of God all I want. She goes, you, Jesse, pointing yeah. to her, you can't. But how much the Spirit of God um, is functioning in both of their ministries, that they're motivated by compassion, and that they both, in their respective ministries, are calling out the identity of the person yeah. that they're working with. Um, and you and I have had conversations about this before, um, about one of the greatest crises of our current day and age is people just have lost their sense of identity. Yes. And there's a huge search for it. That's a different podcast. Though. It is a different. It's probably a series of podcasts. It is, yes. <laughs> so... But that's the, one of the things. Other things that came yeah. out. So. Yeah, I thought in the midst of that was was something that you dropped into that. That in both cases, they're developing community, and yes. community disarms shame. It does. Was, Absolutely was the phrase you mm-hmm. used, and and so much of what mental health, the reason things don't get dealt with, is because of shame. Absolutely, I am ashamed of the things in my life. Mm-hmm that need to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to share them with people who I'm afraid to lose. And there's the fear. That's ultimately mm-hmm. what it boils it is. down Fear to. of rejection and yeah. fear of not belonging. That's so, right. Um, so, I, I, again, as we continue on this journey mm-hmm. of, of, cr- of creating that culture of vulnerability, of transparency, mm-hmm. of authenticity, mm-hmm. that community is going to become healthier and healthier because there's less and less shame about dealing with the things that you need to deal with. Absolutely. That yes. I need to deal with. Mm-hmm. And so, um, well, excellent. Yeah. It was, right. It's been fun. Yeah. So uh, part three, we're going to, we're going to finish out. Uh, and, and that one's going to, there's, there's, we're going to unpack some things in that one. That might be a little bit of a longer, uh, outro because right. there's some stuff to discuss. Well, there. because what we're going to do is we're going to come back around to the Christic covenant 
we may not actually use that verbiage in this third episode, but it really is um, bringing it back into through the lens of Christ, the Christic covenant. Right. So, so tune in next time. Absolutely. Uh, so we want to thank you for listening to this podcast on Freedom in the Kingdom with Jesse Shanks and Christy Jones. If you are interested in a Freedom Ministry session here at Trinity Church, we want to encourage you, please contact the office email at trinity at trinitychurchmorton.org, and they can start the process for you. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, I encourage you to like and subscribe and drop us a comment about the topic we are discussing. Liking and subscribing, I can say that word, <laughs> liking and subscribing, see there it is, uh, will ensure that you're notified when part three uh, is released. It will also be helpful if you could share this or any of our other podcasts with anyone you know who enjoys this diving deep into uh, spirituality, into the things of the kingdom. We would welcome their company as we continue to explore our uncharted faith.